Test, testing. Welcome everybody. We're the City of Morro Bay Recreation and Parks Commission. This is the regular meeting, January 19th, 2023 at 6 p.m. This meeting is being held in a hybrid format tonight with both in-person and virtual public participation. To establish a quorum, it looks like we're all here, so we have a quorum this evening. Well, welcome everybody, and I'm calling the meeting to order. Now, please join me in a moment of silence. Now, Melissa, would you um, lead us in a Pledge of Allegiance, please? Yes, I would. Please stand, face the flag, and join me. Hand over your heart. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Our next agenda item is announcements and presentations. Do we have any announcements here, fellow commissioners? Any announcements this evening? We do have announcements. I'm going to let uh, Ken uh, Zink take it from here. Great. So we have our registration for our girls softball program in the Estero Bay area. This is not only for more Bay residents, but also Los Osos, Cambria, Cayuques, and the surrounding communities. Uh, we're doing registration until the end of the month for the season that kicks off on March 11th this year. So excited to be bringing the program back. Sign up for softball. And that's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda are presentations. We have a presentation regarding the Morrow Senior Citizens. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll go ahead and give a quick update. Uh, the, the most pressing one is our um, annual uh, Seniors Health Fair, and that is this Saturday, 9 to 12 at Morrow Bay Community Center. Uh, we'll occupy the entire community center and senior center for this uh, annual event, which we have we've gone dark the last couple of years. Reasons I don't need to explain. We I think we all get that, uh, but we are back and we've got 30 uh, vendors participating this time. Um, anywhere from your your legal health to physical health, mental health, uh, all areas will be uh, uh, there's somebody there to talk to talk to about whatever issues you'd like to discuss. So. Uh, what I understand is the, uh, the first 25 to show up will uh, be offered a mimosa. You know, so it's real healthy. We're, we're going along that, trying to get everyone to come on out. A couple years ago, we did a, a $200 door prize. That got people out. Um, but we have seen a couple of 100 uh, uh, attend the, these events or in the past. So this Saturday, 9 to 12 at the community center. And... That's the latest and greatest for the senior center right now. Are they doing um, health screenings as well there? They won't be doing health screenings. Okay. No. Is this similar to events like the fire department has put on in the past too, with like senior health, health screenings, community health things? It's just a senior fair for like estate planning and things like that. It's more informational. Specific? Yeah, it's informational okay. by nature. There might. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have a list of. Uh, of the vendors in front of me right now, but um, but like I said, it's really anywhere from their legal assistance to to physical health, mental health. So it's just more informational gathering. Okay, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next is public comment. Do we have any public comment this evening? 
Seeing none, um, we'll go to the next agenda item, which would be the consent calendar. The items on the consent calendar are A1 through A3, approval of the minutes from the Recreation and Parks Commission meeting, our last meeting of November 17th. A2 is the Recreation Service Division status report. And A3 is the Recreation Service Division participations report, September to October. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes as, as submitted? and accept the reports? I'll make a motion to approve and file. We have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so the motion passes. We approve and file. And receive and file A1 to A3. We move to the next order of business, which is Public hearing. Seeing none, we'll move to the, our business items. Business item C1 is the staff report, the Junior Lifeguard Program 2022. Mr. Carmichael. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We're going to let uh, Ken Zink, our, our Recreation Supervisor, uh, <clears throat> who oversees this program, go ahead and uh, discuss the report. Thank you. Great. So yeah, this is my first year being involved in the Junior Lifeguard Program. Uh, it was the first year that we were fully back after a modified program in 2021. Uh, we were fortunate enough to bring on Sierra Emmerich and Connor Bradley as the coordinators for the program. Uh, both stepped into their roles of leadership and we got the aides and instructors all ready for the season uh, over summer and uh, got it rolling. So. We had four two-week sessions, uh, with the most popular session being the latest ses session in summer. Uh, it seemed to conflict the least with the summer school, uh, other programs, and the family's uh, summer vacation plans largely had wrapped up by that point. So uh, uh, the programs, all the sessions filled up pretty instantaneously when we opened them up for registration. We had uh, dedicated uh, registration days at our office where the families got to come out and uh, provide proof of residence or proof of scholarship as you know getting the first crack at registering for the program and they all like I said filled up uh, you know took capacity which initially was 50 um, right when we opened them up so um, that was great and then uh, from there the coordinators you know once we secured enough staff we were able to open up more spots for enrollment um, and some of the people on the wait list were able to add after that. So, um, you know, we brought a good amount of revenue in by charging $500 per session, uh, but we also have a great deal of staff e expenditures on the personnel and the large amount of training required to safely host the program. Um, not only do they all need to be uh, first aid CPR, um, they also need to be Title 22, which is your open water lifeguarding uh, certification. Um, and so, uh, so, you know, we have a good amount uh, spent on that. Um, safety is number one out there. And uh, we're also fortunate uh, enough to work with the harbor, uh, which is under our same umbrella. So, uh, you know, they help us run some of the trainings, uh, do the tryouts. Uh, they host events like the Harbor Ops Day, which seems to be pretty popular among the kids. They get to go out in the boat and um, spend some time with the, the, the harbor members. Um, so yeah, overall, it's a, definitely a, a highly seeked out program. You know, we had people calling from the East Coast, uh, you know, before it even opened up and people from all around uh, just want to be a part of the uh, great setting and, and uh, good program that we have out there. So excited to continue to offer it to everybody. Thank you, Mr. Zink. I have two questions. Okay. One would be, um, as you stated, that there's days where you, is it local priority? So families that live here locally have a set time period to come register before it's open to anyone that lives here. And then as a follow-up to that, what are the residency requirements that you're talking about? Is it just somebody that brings in a utility bill, like that they live here, or? That's correct. Uh, okay. It's 
pretty similar to you know proof of residence that you have to show for anywhere else. Um, you know, like a, a piece of mail showing that you're residing at the Moore Bay address. Um, we also had people that were eligible for scholarships uh, opened up on those days as well. So it wasn't you know people that were involved in our programs, but maybe from Los Osos um, also got an equal chance. Uh, on those days and so yeah so like the first you know like that first Monday was the session a day and then we had that Tuesday be the session B day so um, that's kind of the way that we okay did answer your yeah question? I'm definitely I'm just okay. um, I know that uh, probably in the last decade there's been I mean that program fills up so fast and maybe not necessarily this year or during COVID, but right. um, a lot of local people that I know with kids my own daughter's age, who's 11, um, couldn't couldn't even get into the program for many years because of you know people from everywhere able to just kind of fill up all the spaces. And so I guess I just was wondering, I'm asking um, if there's any type of prioritization for actual residents, people that live here and their kids, or if um, yes. or if it's just kind of like. I own a house here and you know here's a utility bill that I pay all year long and we're here for the summer and I want my kids in this program kind of thing so I just wanted to clarify thank you gotcha yeah I think uh, like those those days I don't know if uh, I don't know if I'm making this clear um, those days are only for those those people so like on that Monday it, it was only for people that could provide that proof of residence and um, or a, a proof of scholarship uh, in our programs uh, so that yeah we're trying to kind of prioritize people locally uh, okay yeah that was my question thank you that's yeah that's i just thank you and I'm, <laughs> let me jump in real quick because i was i was working with the program uh last summer um to get it set up and and ken you're, you he was right on monday was the day for locals and then we went tuesday session a uh, wednesday session b etc so we, we had that initial monday open and available for for res locals and we do ask for some utility bill or something that does show proof of residency. Okay. Yep. And then back on really, just really quick uh, to clarify the title, the training that the, um, that the beach lifeguards received that title 22 is um, advanced first aid, which is a requirement of beach lifeguards as well as pool lifeguards, as well as fire department, paramedics, people like that. Uh, that's a California health uh, code. And that's where the title 22 comes from. Um, this group of uh, lifeguards, they, they received the Title 22 training, as well as the United States Life, Sa Life Saving Association certification. And that's what Ken was referring to with the extensive training in the, in the water on the beach. So they hold a different USLA certification versus what a, uh, a swimming pool, uh, a pool lifeguard would hold, which is a, a Red Cross uh, lifeguard certification. So just just a quick point of clarification. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. I may have a remote a motion to receive and file C one. I will make a motion to receive and file. Do we have a second? I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Seeing no opposition. C1, the staff report, junior lifeguard program is received and filed. Moving on to C2, our staff report of the fall soccer program, season 2022. Mr. Zink, one more time. Mr. Zink. Thank you. Great, yeah, so uh, soccer this year uh, was great. We had over 150 players. Uh, numbers were slightly down from last season which uh, personally for me I was slightly disappointed about because I remember that I said we were going to get bump it up to 200 after the last season so uh, I haven't forgot about that uh, just just uh, wanted to clarify that um, so we, uh, we we were trying to figure out why our numbers dropped a bit um, we had conversations with former staff and key community members about reasoning behind this um, it seems that a lot of people uh, jump to the South Bay Soccer Association once they kind of get old enough. A lot of the kids that go to Los Osos Middle School uh, realize that most of their friends are playing in the, the South Bay Soccer Program, so um, seems to be a natural place that they want to play with their friends. Um, also, they have had an existing board structure that we do not have, which um, allows for uh, 
you know, like a, an existing structure that uh, they're able to play the all-star program in. Um, the teams can play all-stars through us, but it has to be uh, largely coach-driven um, with our program. So um, in that area, uh, you know, we, we have some, some room that we can make up and, and try to make sure that we are promoting our soccer program as much as possible. Um, we changed up the format of our under eight division slightly. Um, last year we kind of had like the pop-up goals and so this year we got um, some real goals for um, like some futsal style goals uh, and changed up the number of players on the field uh, trying to kind of build up the program from the ground up where uh, you know they, it's a good experience for them from when they're young and, and want to keep playing as they get older. Um, so uh, you know one of the things that we're planning on doing you know just uh, realizing that you know we, the South Bay Soccer Association has a lot of players and kind of a, a thriving soccer community is uh, we're planning on hosting a futsal program in the spring so that we can reach that audience because uh, the South Bay Soccer Association doesn't do any soccer activities during the springtime and uh, we have the capability and kind of the partnership with the San Luis Coastal Unified School District to be able to use uh, their facilities and so through that program, we're able to reach all the people that we could reach with our soccer program and the South Bay soccer program. So um, I'm excited about getting that going and um, continuing to grow our soccer community in the area. Hi, again, sorry. Um, there's just two subjects right in a row. I don't think I'll be able to talk on like pickleball or any of the other ones, but my daughter also plays, has played soccer in the rec league since she was in kindergarten. And I've seen as well, I've coached a year um, several years ago, um, and I've seen myself kind of a dwindling of the soccer here in Morro Bay. Um, I don't know if this helps at all. My personal experience is that this year and last year, um, we didn't even have a coach or is any kind of soccer practice times up to a week before the first scheduled soccer game. Um, so there were a lot of parents that I know that moved to the South Bay because they had already been practicing for like several months, like maybe a month or six weeks before. And um, I think it maybe was an organizational thing as far as like getting the parent volunteers and coaches and things in order for different age groups and stuff like that. Um, otherwise, I would say that a lot of the kids had a really great time. I know my daughter and her team had a fantastic time and had a lot of fun and learned a lot. So um, I think what you guys are doing for what you have and what you're able to do in your capacity has been really great. Keep it up and don't get discouraged and um, maybe just harp on some parents more to get a little more involved and show up for their kids and volunteer to coach for a few months a year. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if I could just address uh, like a few parts of that real quick. Um, so I think I'm pretty sure that South Bay signups are actually ahead of ours, and so um, I don't know that I don't know that families would have been able to like jump ship like within the season, kind of after signups had started. But definitely um, they would. You know, I, I could definitely see how they could take that experience and then moving into the next year view it in a negative light. Um, so you know, there's that, and then. Uh, as far as the coaches, we reached out to the whole team multiple times, all the parents that had signed their kids up to play, saying, um, we need one of you to step up to, to make the season happen. Um, we're fortunate enough to have one of our coordinators that even stepped up to save the day for a girls under 10 soccer team out of, uh, you know, the, the kindness of his heart. So, um, it, you know, vol volunteerism is always, you know, a constant battle where you're trying to get people to step up and, and take the team on. And um, we'll continue to try to encourage all the people from our soccer program to step up and, and coach the teams and everything. Because um, I do agree, like, the organization, if you're starting a practice right right before the season starts, it's it's kind of tough. You want, you want to be practicing a month out from the season. And, and that's kind of what we try to go, go towards. Uh, but we have to have, have the volunteers, so part of it. I'm going to expose my ignorance. What's foot, futsal? Yeah. My apologies for not explaining that. Yeah, futsal is, is a version of soccer that's an indoor soccer. And 
it's, uh, it's a faster game because you're not playing on grass, so the ball moves around quick. You're able to really um, develop your, your technical skills. And uh, most, you know, in, mo in a lot of places in, in programs that I've been involved in before, futsal seems to be a little bit more player driven, where um, you don't necessarily need a coach. You just need a roster where you can get, you know, the focus is, you know, more touches on the ball, more playing time, um, and letting the kids kind of drive the level of competition and work on their skills. So, uh, yeah, that's that's futsal in a nutshell. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Zink. Uh, may I have a motion to receive and file C2? So moved. And a second? I'll second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No opposition? So C2 is received and filed. Moving on to C3, this is our uh, report for the summer adult softball. Once again, Mr. Zink. Mr. Zink. Popular tonight. Uh, great. So we had another season of uh, adult softball in the... Uh, in the uh, summer here, and uh, we were, we uh, bumped up to six teams for the first time, which was which was cool for us. Uh, you know, we didn't have to have teams having buys every every week, and uh, we went with um, a single seat, single elimination format uh, of two weeks for the playoffs, and uh, you know we're fortunate enough to have the championship winner sitting in this room right here, our very own Charlie Lowe's team took the championship. Yeah, <laughs> way to go. And they haven't they haven't lost a season yet, so um, someone's got to come in and, and dethrone them. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, about nine weeks of games, and uh, we were, uh, you know, we had some feedback that the playoff format uh, would be uh, better for teams if we did it all in one night. If we we're only going to have three games, then uh, you know the teams that. Uh, win and move on can play the championship game that night and that way some of the teams that uh, didn't make it on will still be able to enjoy the festivities, barbecue, good environment out there at Lila Kaiser for uh, the championship night. So uh, that's pretty much it. Softball went great. We're excited to keep the seasons going. Thank you. Nice job. Um, so now we will um, have a motion, please, to receive and file C3. Make a motion to receive and file C3. All in favor? Oh, we've got to have a second. Second. Okay, nope. I, we have a second. Good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No opposition. So we'll receive and file C3 and move on to C4, the holiday tree lighting. 2022, Mr. Zink, mm -hmm. <laughs> Mr. Wow. Cameron, I missed it. We're, we're going to give Ken a break, and uh, and we'll let uh, Angelica Jeps and our recreation supervisor take this one. All right. Good evening, commissioners. All right, this will be an easy one. We held our annual holiday tree lighting on the first Friday of December. I. Did not put the date on my report though, so we'll have to just look at our calendar. Um, it was, it's kind of, this is an easy one. We do this every year. It's um, simple and easy. I think this year, my only difficulty was that my tree was taken down a month or so before. <laughs> and how do you light a no tree doubt. when you don't have one? Um, but luckily we were able to purchase a lighted, a light, lighted tree, a tree made out of lights. I don't know what we explain it as, but it was a tree made out of lights. Um, and with the help of Public Works, they were able to put that up for me. Um, it lasted the whole entire time until that storm came a couple weeks ago. And it's still surviving, but down. Um, so it was, again, very similar to what we've always done. Um, it's out at City Park. This year, our event was emceed by our very own Recreation Services Manager, Kurt Carmichael. Uh, guests were offered cookies that were donated by the Senior Center. The, uh, we also offered hot cider. We had performances by Kids Club's Children's Center and the Ukuladies and Gentlemen. They're a local ukulele group. They're really sweet and um, 
Yeah, they, they were really great. Um, the Morbe Trolley this year delivered Santa Claus and his elves um, because in we also transported Santa to his home down at the Embarcadero, so it kind of worked out. Um, also, I was asked by a child why he came in the trolley, and I said, well, the sleigh only works on Christmas Eve, obviously, and the trolley is red. <laughs> so there we go. Um, Santa read the night before Christmas. He gathered with the children, lit the light, lit the tree, and um, then did his ever so appreciated um, you know, visits with Santa, where he just lets every child come up and talk to him, and um, I know everyone appreciates that. Again, I just want to give a big thank you to Public Works for being able to help me set that tree up, and we had to do a flagpole and a whole thing, but it all worked. Um, and the lights were pretty. I'm not sure if any of you ever saw them, but they were really, they, I think they looked nice. Um, I'd say we had about 125 participants out there, and uh, this is, like I said, a real simple event as our staff all come out. These guys all get to come out and participate in it. Um, Kids Club Children's Center staff comes out as well and um, makes it easy. I think my only cost this time was that I, I had to buy a tree. <laughs> so, but what's great is that that tree will be able to be used for years until we can get a tree that will be a bit large enough for us to light up again. Um, again, we'll continue to host it on the first weekend of December, which collates with the Breakfast with Santa and Lighted Boat Parade if rain goes away. Um, and we'll continue to invite our local children's programs and other local programs to come out and participate. I think the more the merrier. And that's about it. We'll do it again next year. Any questions? Can we assume that, that Santa is going to continue his pro bono service to the city? Yes. So he's, we're not going to be uh, victims of inflation or... I, I don't think that happens with Santa, right? Doesn't? Okay, good. <laughs> no, yes. I think Santa will be in it for the long haul. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Gallardo. Thank you. Uh, okay, so may I have a motion to receive and file C4, please? So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing no opposition, C4 is received and filed. Let's move next to C5, Breakfast with Santa. Speaking of Santa. And once again, uh, Mr. Chairman, we'll let uh, Angelica take this one. Okay, so the next day we have to serve Santa breakfast, right? Um, so this year, it was on December 3rd, so, which means tree lighting was December 2nd. Um, it was 8.30 to 11.30, and the report is actually incorrect. That was my fault. It said community center, but we actually moved it here that year, or this year, uh, for a few different reasons, but the really great reason was that it did rain. And so it was great to have it in here. Also, this is now our favorite location to, here at the Vets Hall to have this event um, with the kitchen so, so closely located. Santa really loved it. And then in the event that it's not raining next year, we can also extend it outside. So it will be here again. Um, tickets were $10, and they included a pancake breakfast that was prepared by uh, the Bayo Susquehanna's Club and then a trip to the Elf Workshop. This year, I was fortunate enough to have um, multiple volunteers groups provide activities. Um, we had Community Foundation did a hot cocoa bar. Buttercup Bakery provided a cookie decorating station. I had three local churches provide craft areas. Um, we also had a face painting and a gingerbread house baking. And I had volunteers from Morro Bay High School's ASB that came out and did the gingerbreads with these the kids. So um, we were really fortunate. It, it has really grown into a large program. I feel like it'll continue. Uh, it, it, according to some people and Santa, this may be the event of, of Christmas time is what they said. Um, this year we were able to, we sold 116 tickets, 60 pre-registered and then 56 people bought tickets the day of. Again, it was raining, so I think it was a perfect event to come and do. Um, and we were ready. I mean, we did have to at 11 o'clock, like, we have no more pancakes. But um, it, was, it was a really great event. I felt really successful. I think the rest of my team did. Um, and really, I think the only few things is that I said we would change it and do here at the Vets Hall every time. 
um, because we liked the location. And then I would continue to utilize volunteer groups because people really do want to participate in this kind of type of event. So any other questions for me? Sounds terrific. Thank Great. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. C5 is next. Uh, excuse me. C6. Excuse me. Let's have a motion to receive and file. C5. I'll make a motion to receive and file C5. Thank you so much. And a second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? No? Seeing no opposition, C5 is received and filed. Now we'll move on to C6. Staff report on the parks projects. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a verbal report, standing report, uh, and I'll just briefly go over any progress that, that uh, has been reported up to me from our public works uh, department. Uh, I'll start with our bocce court. That, that one is the dearest to my heart, I guess. Um, excuse me, and it's also very visible from our office in City Hall. So, uh, What I understand, excuse me, is first of all, the court's held up uh, I don't know, ec excellently? That's not a word. The court's really held up fantastic. The court's are still there. During the, during the uh, rain. So the drainage system that, we, that was installed worked well. Uh, there's, there's layers of rock, uh, drainage pipes underneath that surface, and then a, a couple of uh, inches of the decomposed granite. Uh, we saw some standing water initially, um, but with the amount of rain that we received, um, I, I didn't think it, I thought it'd wash away, uh, but it really did well. So <clears throat> um, I do know that um, the Public Works Office has purchased a uh, scoreboard, um, ben four benches, and let me see, the uh, scoring system. And they also have on hand the final top layer of the of the bocce surface. So when things kind of dry up and, and they get uh, back up to speed, we'll see um, uh, we'll see the uh, landscaping installed. We'll see the uh, another layer of decomposed granite because I think we lost quite a bit of it. it. It sifted down through, so it's a little chunky right now. But we'll put another layer down there, and then that uh, top layer of mix. Um, we're, we're shooting for February 1st, but um, it depends really on the storm-related work that they have to, to continue to do. So I think the projected time was sometime late March, which I believe is posted on site. Um, <clears throat> we hope to beat that. We better beat that. So we're looking forward to a grand opening uh, sometime February or March. And that's bocce. Um, there, Lila Kaiser Park, uh, that park has seen some, uh, uh, really, really got battered by the elements. <laughs> uh, so there's a couple things going on out there. One is new to me, I wasn't aware of, and they're doing some um, parking lot improvements. So we're looking at some, some sort of improvement, and again, I hadn't seen the plans, but uh, it's supposed to be uh, uh, including some uh, ADA upgrades in the parking lot. Um, and then that's supposed to take off sometime spring or early summer when they're going to do that work. Um, but what we're looking at right now is getting the, the fields kind of rehabbed and ready for, for baseball season. Um, so both uh, Central Coast Little League and our, our Moore Bay Girls softball uh, program uh, begin mid-February. So we've got uh, time constraint there to bring in um, some clay or, or, or some infield surf, uh, surface material, um, work that into the infield as well as do some fence repair and then some turf repair. Um, that turf out there, I don't know if you've been out on that field for some time, but it's, uh, it's real thick um, kikuyu grass that makes uh, the, the ball kind of, the, any ball that you're using out on that surface kind of slow and sluggish. Um, we're fortunate to have our new uh, maintenance superintendent. Um, he's got a real strong background in landscape uh, work. Uh, so I was speaking with him today about how to rehab uh, the grass. Uh, and so he's looking at doing some thatching, uh, maybe uh, aeration, uh, get some, other, some new seed out there and then get that grass cut um, much closer uh, or lower than it is right now. 
Um, so I'm excited to see some work get uh, get done out there at that park. Uh, but that is our challenge, <clears throat> excuse me, over the next uh, three or four weeks. So that's Lila Kaiser. And let's see here. I do have then a quick report on uh, City Park. So you might be aware, and I don't think we brought this one um, to your board, but there's a transit hub project that's taking place uh, at City Park, and they're going to redo uh, the bus stop in that whole area, as well as the, uh, the concrete sidewalks surrounding the entire park and make those handicapped accessible. Uh, that project went out to bid uh, on the 12th of this month. The award will take place mid-February, and then they'll start the project first, first of March. So it's, it's uh, I think, a, a project that's uh, working in conjunction. I, I want to say it's slow cog. Uh, I'm not sure where the funding came from, but it was a transit fund. Um, so I don't think it's a lot of money out of pocket for the city to do this renovation work, uh, but that's what's happening at City Park. And that's not mentioning finding us a new Christmas tree. <clears throat> We're going to need something. That is City Park and, pardon me, the, uh, <clears throat> the last item I have was what you had agendized at the last meeting, and that was um, pickleball locations throughout the city. I did a little tour, did a little thinking, spoke with the city manager, and really what it boils down to is a couple of locations where we could consider a placement of new pickleball courts. One would, and keep in mind, these are this is a controversial topic. Uh, this is not just controversial here in this city, it is throughout the nation, uh, pickleball versus tennis. Um, how do we use these facilities? Who should take priority? You know, on and on and on, we could argue. Um, so keeping that in mind, these are just thoughts right now. One thought was Monty Young tennis courts to convert those to pickleball. Um, I think in order to do, do such a thing, it would, it would require really monitoring the use of the courts. Uh, that would be those courts as well as the pickleball courts to see, oh, and and the tennis courts at Del Mar to see what kind of use do we have here in this community? How heavy are we in pickleball? How heavy are we with uh, tennis? Um, one saving grace with regard to replacing a tennis court with a pickleball court is the Morro Bay High School's got beautiful courts out there. Uh, I think they have 14, I want to say. Uh, those courts are available. The, the drawback is they're only available after 3 o'clock when schools let out or on the weekends. So they are available to the public to use. I've played on them before, and they're nice. Um, <clears throat> but we do have courts available in the, in the city is the point I'm trying to make. Uh, the other location uh, that I had talked to the city manager about is uh, Del Mar Park, which we all know uh, that's where the uh, existing four courts uh, reside. Um, there's two areas that, that we considered uh, where, where pickleball makes sense. One would be on the, uh, the grass, uh, the artificial turf tennis courts there, and the other would be right out in front of the basket uh, on the existing basketball court. You know, there's pros and cons to, to both locations. The, the biggest uh, for pro for both of those locations is it's a central location for pickleball. They're all, the courts are all right there. Um, and that makes it easier for a sanctioned tournament to take place. Um, it, it just, it, it, it makes a lot of sense to, uh, to where the noise of pickleball can be very irritating to many people. And to, so it's not a conducive, or it's already existing in that park. So that to, to add more, would it be a problem? If we were to say, you know, let's put one down in the nice open grass area at Cloisters Park by the homes right there, we'd get some uproar. So it's got a real irritating noise with the with the wiffle ball. Um, so that is a factor uh, with regard to where you place them. So, anyways, back to what I was trying to say is um, the tennis court. It's both pros uh, to have uh, new pickleball courts located on the existing tennis court or the basketball court there. Both would require a conversion, obviously. And then uh, with regard to the tennis court, that has um, 
grant funding that would need to be repaid by the city back to uh, state parks um, because they were built with, with uh, grant funds offered up by the state. Um, and that is one of the contingencies. If, if you do not continue to use the facility as it was designed, then repayment needs to take place. I don't have the, the total dollar amount or the time frame that I can offer up to you right now, um, the time frame as far as when that uh, clause expires with the state, because um, there are, I, I want to say it's either 25 or 30 years that they're looking uh, for any agency to, to hold on to a project that they funded. So um, that's one of the issues with regards to um, putting the pickleball courts there on the existing um, artificial turf tennis court. Um, with regard to the basketball court, we would lose a basketball court there, which is used quite a bit from what I understand. Um, it would need to then be relocated, and that would be a whole other conversation is where do we put a basketball court at Del Mar Park? Um, there, it's, a, it's a large park. Um, there's wide open grassy areas. Um, so again, this is, uh, this would be public hearings. This would be, um, you know, community involvement as to make the decision as to, you know, do we eliminate or relocate a basketball court? Do we, um, eliminate tennis courts? Um, we'd have to do some kind of a cost analysis and benefit to see, you know, is pickleball, does it warrant the city refunding this these grant dollars uh, to the state so it's a I think it's a bit bit complex and would require a study um, to make that determination as if we were to move forward with um, replacing one of the existing recreational components to a park um, with pickleball so it was those two locations that we came up with and I can kind of talk real quick about um, many years ago, actually right when I, when I came on board six years ago, there was conversation taking place with the school district to use Morrow Elementary grassy field, which is adjacent to the community center, um, and convert a lot of that area into pickleball. Um, that was an uncomfortable conversation I had to have with the, that, the, the city manager back then. Um, because I did not agree. Uh, we need that uh, grass space for our, our soccer program. So if we can use or partner somehow with uh, the school district to use some uh, other areas of the Moore Elementary, that is an option as well. But I would not want to see any grassy areas, any, any turf be converted over to hard surface and be used as pickleball or for pickleball. Uh, there are um, large areas of asphalt uh, in the back of that campus um, that could very well be used. Um, but again, that's conversation that we need to have with the school district to see um, you know, what their plans are with that property. Now, I know that there's another uh, bond measure coming out uh, for coastal district for, um, I, I think it's for uh, not, let me see, the last one was for high school. Uh, this is for elementary schools and, and middle schools. Um, so there's opportunity with, with some dollars available there. And again, it would be conversation with school district and, and what they see, what their vision is for that property. Um, that was all I found really that made sense throughout the city as far as um, properties that the, that the city owns. Um, as far as placing pickleball, happy to have discussion or answer any questions you might have. I have one to take it back to before pickleball, like maybe a two part question. Um, as far as Lila Kaiser, um, I know that's more of a city work uh, situation with the, are you talking about possibly repaving the parking lot there or, um, I mean, there's pretty sizable potholes in that parking lot that have been there for years. Yeah. Are the, are you maybe, is the city planning on fixing those before repaving or just to like make it usable, workable? I, I can imagine that it's gotten tremendously worse over yeah. um, these last few weeks. Um, and if, if there's gonna be a softball program down there, I could see that being not fun for any, any of you guys. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the plan from what I understand. And I just found out about that today, uh, about this, um, the repaving project or the, or the um, 
re maybe reconfiguration, I want to say, of the parking lot. Now, exactly how to reconfigure it, I don't know. It's, it's pretty good and wide open. Um, but I do know that there, the plan is to go in and, and do something different to make it ADA compliant as well as fix the potholes okay. and repave. Um, and then the other thing would be, um, maybe this is a silly suggestion, but have you ever thought about um, for Monty Young Park, there's two tennis courts there. Mm -hmm. Has the city thought about making one side of that pickleball and one side of it tennis and then just letting those people figure it out together? Yeah, and that can be challenging. Um, and unfortunately, you can't fit two pickleball courts on one tennis court. It's really close. It's a tight fit. So it might be a one for one. So is it that pickleball courts actually take up more space than one tennis court? No, they're smaller. So what but in the space where there's two tennis courts, you wouldn't be able to fit two pickleball courts? No. Oh, excuse me. In a, in a space where there's two tennis courts? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. But you said to use them, make Yeah, one so there's of them. two tennis courts. Correct. One of them could be converted to a pickleball yes. court, and one of them could just stay a tennis court. Yes, it, that, it, that can be done. There need to be fencing in between. They can work together, bond as a community. Sure. <coughs> we'll put you out there to, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. I, um, you know, my suggestion would be talk to the high school, see if perhaps they want to convert one of their 11 tennis courts to a pickleball. Mm -hmm. um, and then also talk to the people that are running the pickleball court to see if there is an overcapacity situation. Mm -hmm. If we're okay for now, we were just thinking it would be nice to have more pickleball courts, but I don't think we've reached critical mass on that yet. Um, yeah, I, I could tell you though, it's it's busy during the morning hours, uh, up to maybe one o'clock, and then it tapers from there. Um, mm -hmm. So there there certainly is afternoon time available. Um, so it hasn't reached that point yet. Um, but but it, but I do agree there can be conversation with the school district. Um, okay. Also, I know that there was conversation uh, with Cuesta College. As a oh. matter of fact, I had the, uh, the department chair of the kinesiology uh, department there reach out to me to discuss pickleball and how they can move forward with it. So I connected um, her with um, one of our pickleball, what do we call them? Yeah, no, <laughs> ambassador. Ambassador. That's what I'm looking yes. for. And, uh, and so I don't know where that ended up, but Cuesta College has uh, a good number of tennis courts out there. I want to say 16 maybe. It's been a while mm -hmm. since I've played out there. Uh, but they don't use them. They, they lost their tennis uh, team, so they don't really use them as much. So I think that's why we're looking at, or they are looking at potentially uh, converting to pickleball. Okay, well, that'd be good. Yeah. And one thing I want to concur with is I'm also adamant against uh, taking up any of our grass and paving over stuff because that's just not what I don't feel more obeys about. Mm -hmm. The other thing, going back to Laura Kaiser, did the concession stand survive the storms? <laughs> um, and perhaps at a later date we could go look at it and yeah. see because it'd be nice if it could be uh, fixed up and then, you know, I think the Lions Club ran it for a while or, or get somebody to, you know, to provide that service there. Yeah, so I'm I'm uh, not going down there quite yet. It's still pretty nasty, yeah. from what I understand. Um, so I haven't taken a look at it. It it's pretty well beat up, and it has been. It's just sat there empty for so long. Yeah. Um, the Lions Club, uh, we do have a partnership agreement with the Lions Club, and they have um, first right to uh, to operate the concession stand. Our problem is to get the concession stand in an operating. Uh, position is just not it's pretty nasty. correct yeah well so. perhaps we could see if there's any grant money to mm -hmm. to fix that yeah and again kudos to to the um the city maintenance workers they've been doing hero work this last week or so since this storm and mm -hmm. they've always taken such great care of the parks and thank you all mr chairman i've got one other thing i wanted to throw in there and i should have done this during announcement uh the announcement time but and but uh Drew just brought this kind of to my attention. Uh, yes, that, that public works team and the maintenance team has been doing a fantastic job with the cleanup efforts. Uh, it's an enormous task. Um, we were all taken to task during this, uh, the rains. Um, 
our office converted to an emergency shelter, uh, and we housed uh, anywhere from I don't know, 10 to 30 people at any given time um, for a two-day period, um, canceling our programs and then staffing it. Uh, I know our, our office staffed up until 8 o'clock at night, uh, and then volunteers came in on, on rotating shifts to, to take the rest of the evening, and then we're back at it again uh, at 7 the next morning. Um, so my point is uh, the city really rose to the occasion, and I wanted to publicly uh, commend my staff for, for their efforts in uh, working with uh, um, all agencies that were involved and the people that came out that, that we helped uh, and, and served. Uh, everybody stepped up and did a great job, and, and my hat's off to, to all of us, really. And, and I think really... Um, it was a community-wide effort, and it still is. And you see people out right now volunteering to help their neighbors you know, clean up. I know it's it's not just in this town; it's in Los Osos as well. Uh, there's some big devastation there at the mudslides, uh, but it's wonderful to see the communities come together and help each other. Um, and we're we're proud to be a part of that. It's exhausting, but uh, but we're fortunate to have homes and places to be. So, just wanted to say that, and thanks to everybody here. We did, yeah. Thank you. And happy to answer any other questions or if we want to do any more pickleball talk or we... Oh, I think we're good. Did I good there? We right. beat the pickleball to death, yeah, I think. I think so. Yeah. Maybe, I think so. Maybe not. Skip would be proud. They, that, <laughs> Skip would be proud. Those plastic bottles last for 50,000 years, so I think that Yeah. have yeah. time. Thank you. Yeah, well, it's good to learn stuff about like the 30 year life expectancy of a, a project that's been funded by a grant. Mm -hmm. I don't think I knew that. And that's it's a good thing to keep in the back of your mind. Mm -hmm. um, and also, thanks a lot for the great Christmas stuff. That's one of the great services we provide to the community it's for the kids and the people that, you know, want to get together and enjoy themselves on these occasions. So thank you. Okay, so uh, C6, may I have a motion to receive and file? So moved. And a second? I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none. C6, the staff report for park projects is received and filed. So next on our agenda item I see is future agenda items. Do we have anything that we'd like to agendize for the future? You guys. I want a new Christmas tree at the city park. <laughs> <laughs> if I might, Mr. Chairman, we did discuss uh, our joint meeting with the Public Works Advisory Board where we normally would do a tour of facilities in the summertime. Uh, that was postponed uh, be, first of all, because they, the Public Works Advisory Board does not meet in, uh, in July like we do. So it was proposed we do a March or May combined meeting. Um, I'm going to assume it'll be in May due to the rains and the work that they're doing right now and, and just a little bit too much activity with, uh, with Public Works Office. Um, but I'll, uh, you'll, you'll hear word of it either way, one, one way or the other if we're gonna do the tour in March or May. One thing I'd like to keep on the agenda is the concession stand at Lila Kaiser. I feel like if we can keep it on our agenda, it's something in our uh, minds and something hopefully as a committee, maybe we can come to put our heads together and figure that out. And so I'd like to maybe at least just a quick little update like no one's done anything, it's still falling apart, yeah. or so, a group has come in and you know we're open for business. I, I just wanna keep in touch with that. Can do. Very good. Oh, I'd be willing to come in for an extra meeting to meet with the facilities people and go on that tour if that's what it takes, you know? Okay. Do it on a, yeah, I always hard. find it educational and interesting and it's, and it's really yeah. nice to meet those folks. Yep, yeah, me too. Okay. Absolutely. So a special meeting, something like that, where it's not in our regular every other month. Like if it's their meeting or something and they can't, mm -hmm. they're busy, yeah. and that's maybe a yeah, little more a demanding special... than what we have going on, yeah. we can accommodate to their schedule. Yes. Right. Thank you. I'd like to add an extra meeting to do that. Okay. I'm good with that. You guys all right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Sounds like a good idea. Okay, 
So now it's time to adjourn. Okay. And our, we're adjourning. Our next regular meeting will be 6 p.m. Thursday, March 16th, held right here. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you all.